Hello and welcome to this presentation about SOLIDWORKS simulation. The theme of this segment is an engineering view of finite element analysis. My name is Reza Tabatabai. I'm a senior technical manager for the simulation products at Dassault System SOLIDWORKS and I live in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. The topics I will cover today. I first uh, review the different approaches in solving engineering problems. A few words about finite element analysis or FEA history. I run through two examples of numerical methods, one with the Newton Raphson algorithm and the other a two spring system using matrix structural analysis that shows the underlying concepts of uh, FEA. I review the steps from a CAD model to FEA results and highlight some of the things to watch in defining analysis types, model setup, and so on. I give some examples of FE applications in more advanced topics like multi-physics and conclude with some comments about the science and art of engineering design. FEA is used today in many branches of engineering. Uh, this video is an engineering high-level view of FEA, yet the explanations and examples uh, mostly reference structural and mechanical applications. Uh, this is the area where FEA started and is being used most uh, extensively today. Uh, some of the specific uh, technical topics relevant to the proper usage are covered in uh, other videos and other more theoretical aspects of FEA are not uh, covered uh, here. When it comes to solving engineering problems, you can think of uh, three basic approaches, analytical, experimental and numerical. Let's uh, think of a simple cantilever beam on the bending. Uh, this goes back a few centuries uh, to the times of Leonardo da Vinci and Galileo. An analytical approach makes an assumption, in the case here the so-called beam theory, and solves the problem directly. For a given cantilever beam of length L, elastic modulus E, cross-sectional moment of inertia I, fixed on one side and subjected to, to an uh, end force P at the other end, the resulting small deflection due to bending can be found to be PL cube divided by 3 EI. Uh, the problem with analytical approaches is that they are only applicable to the simplest of cases and are not possible for real world uh, applications. In the experimental approach, you build a simplified, uh, scaled version of the model and make actual measurements. Obviously, this is expensive, difficult, time-consuming, prone to mistakes, and not practical for many real-world applications. In a numerical approach, you basically use mathematics for uh, simulation. It is suitable for computers. The difficult numerical implementation is done by experts in the background. The program user can be trained more efficiently at the required level to apply it to his or her particular problem. It covers a much wider range of applications. It is cheaper, easier, and faster than alternative approaches. Searching on YouTube for a good video to show an experiment for natural frequency vibration analysis I came across uh, the following. In the lab, they uh, took a rectangular plate uh, supported at the center. To excite its natural frequency, they use a tone generator. At different frequencies or pitches of the uh, tone generator, the plate is going to vibrate and create uh, different vibration modes or shapes. Uh, these movements are uh, obviously extremely small. Uh, to be able to visualize the movement, they pour a white powder on the plate. On the black color plate, at each given mode, uh, the white powder will move to places that are not oscillating up and down, uh, thus uh, giving you the visual of the shape of the oscillation. I did not uh, have the exact dimensions of the plate uh, or the information of the type of material used in this experiment. So I created a similarly looking model and uh, ran a natural frequency study using SOLIDWORKS simulation. Uh, literally within a minute, you can create the model, set up, run, and generate the mode shapes. 
again since the specs are different you cannot compare the values uh, of the frequencies but you can compare the shapes the white color in the experiment corresponds to the blue color in the simulation uh, these are uh, the areas where the vertical displacement is close to zero that means uh, the plate is not vibrating up and down I show here a few pairs of experiments versus simulation uh, mode shapes The higher the pitch of the tone, the more complex uh, the geometric patterns that are found. You see how well the results correlate and how much easier, faster and cost effective it is to do simulation than doing uh, lab uh, experiments. Here I would like to show you an example uh, for a numerical method, uh, the famous newton raphson You have a variable x and a function of x equal to uh, 0. The iterative method used to find the unknown x is the following. You take an initial guess x1, uh, it could be any number, uh, you find the value x2 that equals x1 minus uh, f of x1, divided by the first derivative of f uh, evaluated for x1. Uh, having found x2, you substitute it in the formula and find x3. You repeat this uh, iterative process until the error is small enough. That means xi and xi plus 1 are almost uh, the same. Uh, let's do this uh, for a function of x uh, that is the quadratic equation uh, ax uh, um, square plus uh, bx uh, plus uh, c uh, equal to zero. For the quadratic equation, there is an uh, analytical solution as a function of uh, coefficients a, b, and c as given here. Here is a, a quadratic equation, uh, 2x squared plus uh, 3x minus 5 equal to 0. Uh, the two analytical solutions are negative 2.5 and a positive 1 based on the analytical formula given previously. In the graph uh, x versus f of x, uh, the solutions are the intersections of the function with the x-axis. Use the formula for the iterations as discussed previously. The function is 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Uh, the first derivative of the function is 4x plus 3. Starting with a guess of minus 6 uh, for x1, after only 4 iterations we converge to the solution within a very small uh, margin of error. Starting with another guess of 10 quite off from the actual result of 1, we fast converge to the correct solution again within a desired accuracy level. The underlying concept in finite element analysis is the idea of discretization. Uh, imagine you want uh, the length of a curved path. You can approximate uh, the curved path by straight segments. Uh, measure the individual length and add them uh, up. The research and development of the finite element method and its original implementation in the form of matrix structural analysis was in the 1950s and was only practical with the availability of computers because FEA is computationally intensive. Uh, ever since and uh, throughout the years, uh, thousands uh, of books uh, and research papers have been uh, published in the field, but the pioneers have been uh, very few. Uh, one of the biggest uh, contributors in the field of finite element analysis has been uh, Professor uh, Ray Clough of the University of California at Berkeley, who also coined the term uh, finite element method in his uh, 1960 paper. Let's introduce you to the concept of uh, finite element analysis and what happens in the background using the simplest possible example. Uh, we take a one-dimensional spring with a spring constant k. Under an, ex an external force uh, f, the resulting longitudinal displacement will be u. The simple equation is f equals k times u. 
we rewrite this equation in a more general way and in a matrix form. The spring E is defined by its two endpoints I and J. The endpoints say can also be called nodes. The displacements at the end nodes uh, are UI and uh, UJ. The element stiffness is KE. Uh, everything is one dimensional. Uh, having two nodes that can only move uh, longitudinally, uh, we have two degrees of freedom. The local element stiffness matrix is uh, two by two. We now have a system of uh, two springs, uh, still a one-dimensional problem, joined together at the common node 2 and subjected to an external force uh, F. We apply the formula for each element individually based on its stiffness and the end forces and uh, displacements. For the two spring system, we apply the requirements of equilibrium between the external and internal forces at every individual node. To have equilibrium, the summation of all forces at each node must equal zero. Uh, the subscripts of one to three are the node numbers. The superscripts one to two are the element numbers. Using the previous equations uh, relating the element displacements uh, with its forces and the equations uh, of equilibrium, we can form the global equation system and the global stiffness matrix. It is uh, 3 by 3 because uh, the um, model has a total of three nodes with one degree of uh, freedom per node. We now apply the boundary conditions. In the force vector, there are no external forces at nodes 1 and 2, so F1 equals F2 equals 0. And uh, F3 is the external force uh, previously referenced as uh, F. In the unknown vector U, U1 is known because uh, of the, the zero displacement condition at the support. We solve the equation system and find the two primary unknowns U2 and U3. In the final element method, uh, there are different element shapes, uh, each with its own uh, number of nodes and uh, degrees of freedom, uh, depending on the type of the problem. And many element types and formulations exist, 0, 1, 2, uh, and uh, three-dimensional elements like for mass, uh, beam, shells, and uh, solids. Uh, degrees of freedom in a shell or beam in 3D for uh, stress analysis have six degrees of freedom uh, three translational and uh, three rotational. There are also many element formulations such as the four and ten noted uh, tets, uh, three and six noted thin and thick shells, beams, and so on. Uh, we discussed the underlying concept behind the finite element uh, method using the simplest case of a two D uh, uh, of a two spring system. Uh, the element stiffness was the one value of spring constant. It was one dimensional and one degree of freedom per node. You can think of a continuum as an infinite number of springs. FEA reduces these infinite number of springs to a finite number of springs uh, through the process of meshing and discretization. Element stiffness formulations behind the scenes are of course a lot more complicated uh, material models need more complex uh, parameters and various study types uh, lead to different systems of uh, equations. So even though things are a lot more uh, complicated, uh, fortunately a lot happens uh, in uh, the background and it's uh, transparent to the user. But it still employs the same uh, proven uh, fundamental concepts. Uh, this is the beauty of the finite element method. Here are uh, the steps uh, you typically go through. Starting with the CAT geometry, you simplify the model if necessary and make uh, some idealizations. Uh, for example, if there are features that are insignificant to the accuracy of your analysis and you're concerned about the size of the problem, you remove them. Uh, you then uh, set up the problem, define the study type, uh, materials, uh, fixtures, and loads, have the program mesh the model and solve it. Uh, you then post-process the results. Final element uh, method started with structural analysis but quickly found its way into other uh, mechanical, 
um, thermal fluid flow, that is computational fluid dynamics or CFD, and uh, electromagnetics. In isolating the model from its surrounding areas and applying the proper restraints as the engineer, you make some judgment calls. Uh, this can uh, potentially affect your results. Uh, we discussed this in greater detail under uh, another segment called fixtures and loads. The finite element method is a powerful tool, but you should also be careful to use it properly. Uh, there are nuances involved that you can learn by proper training or by try and error and looking at many different options. Uh, let's take the simple cantilever here. Applying a force or a prescribed displacement on an edge can give different results compared to applying the prescribed displacement on a small surface. We discussed this in greater detail in the video about fixtures and loads. You can apply different failure criteria depending on analysis types and different requirements. As an example, during post-processing and the interpretation of results, you may compare the equivalent Mamisa stress uh, throughout the model with the yield strengths of the material uh, as a limiting value. Depending on the material and functional requirements, uh, different failure criteria should be examined. As you make assumptions, uh, the program behaves uh, accordingly. Uh, a linear material model is sometimes uh, good enough, other times uh, you have to adopt uh, more uh, sophisticated material models, sometimes specific ones only uh, suitable to a group of materials uh, like um, nitinol. Uh, beyond uh, the material behavior, the geometry and the formations uh, under the given loads may require the program to use different solvers like iterative ones to capture uh, large deformations uh, or general uh, contact conditions. You may have heard about the expression, what you see is what you get in technology such as in computer programming and uh, desktop uh, publishing or sometimes uh, in regular conversations. Uh, thinking of finite element analysis, I would slightly modify this into the expression what you get is what you set up. Uh, with this in mind, as powerful as FEA is and as great a tool it is, make sure that uh, um, in using FEA you get properly trained for your level of usage, examine different scenarios and verify your final results uh, through experiments expert reviews or other means. There are different sources of approximation you have to be aware of. On the input side, you can think of uh, geometry simplifications, model isolation, boundary conditions, and loads. On the modeling side, you can think of things like material model, element selection, uh, convergence, and so on. Uh, you want to reduce these approximations and preserve accuracy without making things unnecessarily complicated. Raise the balance. It is problem specific and only you would know. There are different levels of uh, complexity and requirements. Uh, from a linear elastic uh, static analysis uh, of a simple part to uh, the nonlinear dynamic analysis of uh, car crash tests uh, where you can have uh, aspects of uh, short duration shock loading, uh, contact and large uh, deformations, plasticity and large strains, non-conventional material models, uh, crack propagation, fracture mechanic, and uh, material rupture, and so on. Uh, we mentioned earlier about FEA being used in structural, mechanical, thermal, fluid flow, uh, CFD, and uh, electromagnetics. Multi-physics problems require a combination of analysis. Uh, it could be uh, one-directional. Let's say uh, for the billboard here on the highway, you can first uh, run a CFD analysis and find the pressure distribution throughout the model, uh, then have the program export the results into stress analysis and find the resulting displacement and stresses. Uh, the small displacement of the plane uh, of, of, of the panel uh, does not uh, uh, affect the CFD solution. In other cases, you may have uh, fully coupled uh, multiphysics. The shape of the balloon uh, constantly changes 
as air is blown into it and you have a full blown uh, fluid uh, solid interaction and no pun intended an example of a high end uh, multi physics simulation is the living heart project by colleagues at uh, the cell systems uh, simulia uh, the human heart uh, beats uh, about 100,000 times and can pump uh, 7,000 liters of blood every single day. Uh, within its chambers and the valves, uh, you have an interplay of electrical and uh, mechanical fields uh, together with uh, fluid flow. Uh, the ultimate goal of the human uh, heart project is to employ uh, the human heart uh, simulator to probe uh, landscapes of uh, clinical uh, parameters and guide uh, device design and treatment planning in uh, cardiac, uh, cardiac diseases. Engineering design uh, should be uh, not only about the science of solving an engineering problem, but also the art of designing the best uh, solution. There are many solutions for a given problem. Here are images from six bridges built as early as several hundred years ago up to very recently. Uh, these bridges are in uh, Isfahan, Florence, London, New York, Sydney, and uh, San Francisco. Uh, these are all bridges, uh, but each is a fantastic engineering masterpiece in its own way. Uh, such choices uh, depend on many factors, among them the available technology, cost and time constraints, uh, functional requirements, uh, aesthetics, and uh, so on. So the job of an engineer is not to create something that just works, uh, but is optimal for the different factors involved, like a piece of uh, beautiful art creation. As important as all the previously mentioned factors are, the science of the engineering design is the most important one, of course. Your creation must fulfill its functional requirements under different, sometimes extreme, uh, circumstances. The original Tacoma Narrows Bridge, built in 1940, collapsed only a few months after its opening, uh, vibrating violently under wind conditions. Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge uh, here in the, the San Francisco Bay Area is still standing after almost uh, 80 years. Both are suspension bridges uh, and the Golden Gate Bridge uh, has a span 50% uh, longer than the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. One big difference though is the additional truss structure in the Golden Gate Bridge. It is therefore incumbent upon the engineer to examine not just the sum but all possible modes of failure, uh, such as strength, vibration, wind, earthquake, and others uh, for the bridge here. For these purposes, FE and simulation can be a powerful tool. A few words uh, to sum up. Considering the many limitations of uh, other approaches, numerical methods are powerful tools to better understand and simulate reality. Fundamental analysis is well researched and extremely appealing for virtual prototyping. FEA lends itself beautifully to simulate many applications and in different fields, from the preliminary design of a simple part to complicated model of an airplane and understanding the most complex behaviors such as a beating human heart. As powerful as uh, the FEA methodology is, and as sophisticated uh, software packages continue to become, this is still a tool. It is therefore incumbent upon the engineer to use it properly and effectively. As engineers, there are many ways to design a product. FEA is an excellent tool to come up with better, cheaper, and more efficient products. Uh, thank you for watching and your interest in Dassault Systems SolidWorks uh, simulation products.